What is up YouTube? Thrift School over here right outside the Goodwill. We're going to head inside, see what we can find to buy and sell on eBay and Amazon. I'm pretty stoked, even though this place isn't usually the best, because I'm going to be hitting up a few thrift stores today. But let's head in here first and see what we can find. So here we go inside of the thrift store, and this guy's restocking the vending machine. I almost, I didn't even notice this guy here, and right as I walked in with my camera, I almost filmed him right in the face, so that's why I looked down so fast. Uh, I don't know why they were greeting people there. I guess so they don't steal those that food that's being entered into the machine. I don't know, but first thing I go and check out are the CDs, seeing if there's anything new and sealed here. Don't see much, so I figure I could always come back and scan them. Most people don't go through the CDs first, and... Wait, I think I saw something out of the corner of my eye. Yup, in the bottom of this bin, I found a few Harry Potter hardcover books. And these things aren't really worth too much on their own. They're only two bucks a pop here. And the reason why I grab them is I wait until I get the complete set and then I sell them on eBay or Amazon depending on which one is going for a good amount at the time. Even on eBay, it's not too bad because you could ship them via media mail and the price isn't too bad uh, shipping wise. Now I found a Polaroid camera. These usually go really well, but for $8, I had to put it right back. I could sell these for about $20, $25 pretty easily, but they do have to ship via priority mail, uh, flat rate padded envelope, which ends up costing about $7.50. So it's not really a lot of money left on the plate at that point. Now these Wilton cake pans can sell for really good money. They want four bucks for it. You could see whoever was selling it before was asking three. Goodwill asking four. Typical Goodwill. This is actually a pretty good pan. I didn't grab it. I'm not sure why I didn't grab it. I think because there were a few dents in it. And I don't really like selling uh, Wilton cake pans or things like that if they have dents in them. Now look at this. We do have some more books. The employee that was stocking the shelves saw that I grabbed them and started handing me all the ones that he found. This one was ripped up, so I do end up putting it back, but the other two were in great condition, and he came over while I was looking through these backpacks. Now, these are Target clearance. You can see... I'm looking for a price. There's the price, $15. That's a pain to get out, but you gotta get it out of the backpack. They write it in there for some reason. And 15 bucks each... You could see that they were originally clearanced out from Target. They have those old Target clearance stickers. I end up throwing a bunch in my cart, but I only take three. I could profit about 25 bucks a pop on them. That's not bad. I will take that. And then look at this, guys. A huge stack of video games. I couldn't believe it. There's like four bins just filled. And I'm like, okay, this is new. This is interesting. I'm starting to look through, and I notice, okay, Modern Warfare 2, Uncharted, some decent games in here, nothing super valuable. Then I start to notice that it's the exact same games over and over and over again. I don't know what's going on here. There's like 20 of each of these games. I don't know if it was a local reseller in the area, a local game store in the area that went out of business. And they just brought all of their duds of the exact same games to this Goodwill. At two bucks a piece, I was thinking about grabbing those Connect Adventures. Because you could bundle them with uh, Connect Sensors. But I don't really find the sensors too often around me, so I left them. I mean, I could find those games pretty quick and easily during uh, garage sale season, get them for a buck or less. So I end up actually leaving all of these games. It was really sad. There wasn't a single thing in here worth anything. All the same game. And here in the glass case... I see they've cherry picked out some good ones, $5 a piece on the good ones right there. These ones are a little mixed in price, $5 and $2. Um, nothing amazing, I don't think. If I'm missing anything, let me know. SSX is a great game. I don't think it's worth too much, though. And look at that, NBA 2K18 for $15. That is crazy. That's expensive. I think just because it's an Xbox One game, a newer system, the thrift store doesn't really know and they price it a little high. I see that a lot with PS4 and Xbox One games, especially Switch games. And sometimes I do find Switch games at these thrift stores. Now, here's something cool. Over by the toys, I found a brand new disc golf set for 6 bucks. It's selling for about $25 over on Amazon. So, cool, awesome find there. Looking over all the toys, seeing if I could find anything else. And it's not really looking too great. There's a bunch of Target clearance. You can tell it's Target clearance because it has this white sticker on it, especially in Connecticut. I'm not sure if that's the same around the rest of the country. But in Connecticut, you know, they mark out the barcodes. They put a white sticker on there. They make it as hard as they can to make you want to buy the item. But it's all right. You know, I still found, a, you know, a pretty decent amount of stuff here. Got those backpacks, got the video games. I want to head to a pawn shop that's in the area. 
see if we can make some deals at this place. I do like going here often. So I did pretty good at this Goodwill right here. You can see my car, I got three of those backpacks. I put two back because I wasn't super certain how fast they would sell. And the price seems a little inflated compared to eBay's prices. They're selling for like 25 on eBay. Amazon, they're at 60. So I think that's inflated, but I bought three. We'll test it out, see what happens. I got that disc golf set, a bunch of Harry Potter books and a CD. We'll go over everything at the end. We're gonna head to a pawn shop right now. So let's see how we do there. All right, guys, we are here outside of the little pawn shop. It's actually a very nice day out. It's only 37 degrees, but it feels a lot warmer with the sun. We're gonna head inside. We have another car pulling up right now. The place is actually pretty busy for a pawn shop, so hopefully we can find some stuff. I primarily look for video games in pawn shops because they're just quick and easy. So let's see what we find. Um, still looking. I'll let you know for sure. Thank you. You want to write her up? So I'm out here at the back of this beautiful Mercedes with Dre. Nobody knows him, but he's a good guy right here. He hooked me up inside the pawn shop, and he's got a lot of his own stuff back here. So I'm going to scan through it all, see if we can come out with a deal, and I'm sure we can. Let's do it. Oh, really? A whole bunch of the Girl Scout cookies? No, or? there were cookies from like the Savage Shop. Some lady like sells them on a marketplace. Oh, really? So I went there and I bought like four bags. I was one of the customers. We sold them off. Oh, geez, yeah. dude. And the, and the guys over there, you want to uh, That's take awesome. a picture of it? Yeah, I was just, yeah, that's, I ended up getting it. It looks good. All right, so we are back at the house. And thank you to Andre for helping me out, hooking me up. He works at the pawn shop. He watches the YouTube videos. So he hooked me up on a price at the pawn shop and then brought me out to his car afterwards because he sells stuff locally and he's like, hey, if we could work something out, I could sell you some stuff, make some money, and then you could then flip it and make money on Amazon. And I said, yeah, sure, let's do it. So you guys saw me going through the car a little bit. You guys saw me at the pawn shop. And of course, you guys saw me at Goodwill. So we are gonna go through all of this stuff right here at Goodwill. You saw I picked up the backpacks. I picked up the... Um, Disc golf and one CD. The CD I'm only gonna make two bucks on, but disc golf, you know, I'm, I'll make like $15 on 20 bucks. And then the backpacks, like I said, they're inflated on Amazon while the price is lower on eBay, so I'm not really sure what I could sell them for. Paid 15 bucks each and I bought three of them. If I can just more than double my money, they had a decent rank on Amazon. If I could more than double my money, make about 20, 25 bucks a piece on them, I would be happy. I don't know if that's possible, but we'll see what happens. So let's jump right into what I got from Dre first, then we'll go to the pawn shop. So we worked out a deal and I paid him via PayPal. I'll actually get the exact total because I can't, I think it was 62 bucks I think is what I paid. So let's go through everything. We got a pair of Nike gloves right here, brand new sealed. So pretty much the deal that we worked out since he hooked me up so much in the pawn shop. I told him I'll pay him 50, 50, whatever it's selling for on Amazon. Let's say something's selling for $10 after fees. I'll give him five bucks for it and I'll make five bucks, right? It's not like I'm gonna make a killing on this stuff, but it's to help him out for hooking me up. And plus guys, you wanna help these people out and you wanna help out people that you do business with so you can do more business with them in the future. It's not always about making a killer deal. I see it all the time in the comments. People say, oh, you should have offered half, you should offer this. Well, it leads to more and more and more buys in the future where if you beat somebody up, you only get that deal once or you don't even get the deal at all. So it's about doing more than one deal. It's about building a long-term relationship with these people who then in turn, he works for a pawn shop. So awesome. I'm able to get more deals through that. So let's keep going through this. We have a Barbie fashionista doll. So he pretty much buys toys when they're on super duper clearance at like Target, Walmart, TJ Maxx. We have a few Funko Pops here. We have a Han Solo Target exclusive. 
a Iron Man Target exclusive. So <clears throat> some of these actually might go up in value. A Captain America Target exclusive. Um, an Amumu GameStop exclusive, but he has some box damage. This guy was selling for like $50. I gave him 12 bucks for it because over on Amazon in used condition, it's selling for $25. So you can see he has like a rip in the box. I'm not sure how well you could see it, but he has a little rip in the box down there. So I'd have to sell it as used. These collectors are very, very finicky and very picky about the condition of the boxes. If it was like, maybe not a Barbie, but just like a random box toy with a tiny little nick in it, I wouldn't really worry about selling it as new, but especially with Funko Pops, you gotta make sure they're in like pristine condition. And we have another Funko Pop right here, the Seventh Sister. So what I could do, since I, Gave them half of what they're going for and they're only selling for about you know eight to ten dollars after fees i paid them between you know three and five dollars a piece on these things i'm only gonna make about three four five dollars um i could hold on to them until christmas time uh especially some of these limited edition ones and just see if the price goes up it could be a fun um, you know, hold and wait games since I'm only losing out about 12 to $15. I think it's worth the risk. So I think that's what I'm going to do. If they end up not being worth anything and they completely drop in value, whatever, they end up going up and I end up making 10 bucks, 15 bucks a piece. Cool. They took up no space. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And then we picked up a Pac-Man arcade machine. This thing's kind of cool and works good. And the last thing we picked up is a brand new little Taka set. Oh, this thing is gonna go for a while. All right, now let's get into the pawn shop stuff. This is the really good stuff. I paid $360. Trust me, would have been a lot more than that if he wasn't there. Uh, initially, I was trying to get this. We have some PS Vitas. Uh, this one was marked at $129, and there was another one that I purchased. Um, here's the case for it. Uh, I think it's right in here. So I picked up two PlayStation Vitas. Yep, here's the other one. This one was actually marked at 139. This one was marked at 129. Very, very high for Vitas, especially at a pawn shop, considering they only sell for about that over on Amazon. I wasn't, I couldn't pay that. So I asked them what's the best they could do. And the guy said 129 on the 129 one and then 100 on a different one. I don't know. Maybe I got the other one. I don't know where the other one is. Maybe it was the 139 one. Um, so I said, I still can't do that. And he said, okay. <laughs> but then Andre came over and he hooked me up. He helped me out. We did 75 bucks a pop on these. So I'm not going to make a killing on them, but I will end up making, I think like 40 bucks or so. And they're pretty quick movers. So I decided to pay up on them and hopefully, you know, get more stuff bundled into the deal. So we did end up getting a whole bunch of video games that we'll go through in a minute, but let's go through some of these calculators right here. Picked up two TI-83 pluses. These were $39 a piece, so they would have been 80 bucks. I offered 40 bucks for the pair. He countered at 50, and then I said I could do 45 because TI-83 pluses are not the most valuable ones, and he agreed. So 45 bucks for two TI-83 pluses. This is a clear blue edition, so this might be going for a little bit more. I'm not sure. Um, back to school season, these kind of go up in value, so maybe I could hold on to them. I'm not sure. I think I'm just gonna send them in and get my money. And then we just have a black one right here. And you know, I didn't even check the condition of this one. I probably should have. Uh, I had to put a few things back because a few things were either cracked or damaged. Uh, let's see. Otherwise, this deal would have been a lot bigger. Okay, cool. So normally, you want to be careful because these could have dead pixels on the screen. Oh, the batteries are still in here, which is not great. But let's see. Cool. Works beautifully. No dead pixels, nothing like that. So we got some money here. We got some money here, looking good. Let's go through the last handheld I picked up. Actually, there's two. We got a 3DS in here, open it up. Now the issue is with these, no chargers. I don't think there's a charger for, oh, there's a charger for, oh, then this is perfect. There is a charger for the PS Vita that uses a proprietary charger. This is the first gen. It uses its own, even though this is a knockoff ONN brand, which, I mean, they're a popular brand, but it's not Sony branded. It will work with this. And then the newer PS Vita, the newer Slim Mod, oh, I got two older models. Okay, that's actually better. So 
while I was going through their stuff, they were pricing the newer model PS Vitas more than the older model. But in reality, guys, the older model sells better. More people want the older model because it has a better screen on it. So keep that in mind. Now, I personally like the newer model. It uses a micro USB to charge. The screen looks pretty much the same to me, so it doesn't bother me. And they're easy to just go to the dollar store and buy a micro USB cord. This uses that special charger, so it is a pain. But it did come with one, so that's good. Um, these two should be fine there. Um, and then in here, we have a 3DS, a nice red one. Tested it, it works perfectly. It came with a charger, so that's good. The stylus is damaged. It's uh, like, a, I think it's a knockoff one. So I could include it. It doesn't fall out, which is nice. So I could just say, you know, it comes with a third party charger. There's a little scratch on the bottom, but besides that, this thing's in great condition. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to get another, oh no, we didn't end up getting it, phew. Okay, I was supposed to get a 3DS XL, it was the Mario and Luigi model, but it was cracked on the bottom, and the bottom was like loose. I'm like, what is this? So I tried popping it back in, and it was completely busted, and I tried turning it on, it wouldn't turn on, I'm like, I'm gonna leave this behind. So, okay, phew, cool there. Now on to the video games. We have two copies of Minecraft on the Wii U. They were originally asking, $20 for this, which is way too expensive. I'm gonna pull out my phone and we're gonna scan in these video games so we could just get a price on them real quick. Oh, also I missed one Funko Pop. He was laying on the ground. Uh, it's a Death Star droid and that was included with uh, Andre's lot right there. So let's scan in these games. Yeah, they were originally asking 20 bucks a piece on these. Pretty much everything in there was priced at Amazon prices, which I mean, I've seen some of the games in there for years, right? I've been going to the same pawn shop for a couple years now, and I've seen some of the exact same games in there. So I don't know why they price it so high. Maybe they sell things like that. I, I don't know. Um, but I've seen the same stuff in there. So these are selling for $27 over on Amazon. I will make $19 after fees. So we got two of them. So that's about 40 bucks right here. We have a Rapala fishing game. Scan this one in. This one is selling for, uh, which actually surprised me, $26.75. I'll make 18 bucks on this one after fees. Now, the good thing is my copies are complete, so I may be able to actually get a little bit more. So let's just say 20 bucks on all of these. So 20, 40, 60 dollars right here. Now I'm still in the hole 300 bucks, but we still have a bunch of good games here. So let's keep scanning. We have a SpongeBob game right here. This is SpongeBob SquarePants Plankton's Robotic Revenge. This, I don't think, came with an original manual. It came with this insert, so it is still complete, which is nice. This game, another one that totally surprised me, selling on Amazon FBA, I'll pop the price up right here, for $47.94, so almost 50 bucks, but that is inflated. You can see the merchants down below are selling it for $25.94. I think around like $30, $35 is pretty much the max that you could get on this, which is fine. Knock about 10 bucks off, a little more than 10 bucks off. Make just over $20 on this one. So let's even bring it on the low end and just say 20 bucks again. So we're at 20, 40, 60, 80 dollars. Next we have NBA 2K10, and this version on the PSP, it's complete, which is nice. It has Kobe Bryant on the front, which is the reason why it's gone up in value. And this one, as you guys can see over here on the screen, is selling for $21.05. I'll make about 14 bucks on it. So not bad there. We could just round that one up to 15. So we're at 20, 40, 60, 80, 95. Now we have some 3DS games. Now there were more games I would have purchased, but I didn't because they were either too scratched, really damaged, there were some games with cracks in them. I, I see this a lot at pawn shops and it always surprises me. Maybe um, the person that takes them in doesn't know about video games. Maybe, you know, cause I wouldn't know a lot about car stereos or things like that. So I wouldn't know what to look for, but I feel like discs are very easy to know. And I see it all the time at pawn shops all around me. They'll have like cracked games or scratched to crap games to where they will not work, like deep scratches and they pay for them. So maybe they buy them in like bundle deals and they just try and sell them. I don't know. I don't know. I know nothing about it. So it just always surprises me. Otherwise I would have gotten a lot more games. And this one right here is a great game. It's called Metopia. Uh, it's complete in here with its little pamphlet, the game and it's AR cards. It comes with cards. So try and remember that if you ever find this game. 
They were originally asking $30 for this thing. 30 bucks for a 3DS game at a pawn shop. Don't think that would ever sell at a pawn shop. It's selling on Amazon for $38. So I will make $28 after fees on it. Um, and again, I paid 360 for everything. So we'll just say about 30 bucks on this guy. So we're at what, 95, 105, 115, 125. Then we got Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gate. Uh, they were asking $15 for this. It is cartridge only, so I do have to go off the cheapest price. All right, this one, as you guys can see, is actually selling for a pretty decent amount. Uh, $33.76 is the cheapest used one um, via Amazon FBA. So I'll make about $24, $25 on this guy right here. So what were we at? $125, $135, $145. 150 so that's not bad and then one more game right here it's nintendo dogs and cats and this one is complete as well and this one surprised me as well like i was just kind of scanning everything because i don't come across 3ds games too often i don't come across wii u or psp games too often so i don't know the value of all of them uh, i know the value of a lot of games but not all of them and this one, pretty good rank. You guys can see up here on the screen, selling for $19.16. That could be cartridge only, so I could possibly get more. It's about $12 profit. We could round that up to uh, about a, mm, we'll just say 15 bucks, give or take. Uh, so not bad there. We're at 150, $165 just in these. Uh, the PS Vitas, I'm going to type it in real quick. All right, so the original model is selling for more than the newer model. I found the original model right here on the screen. Has a higher rank, not a horrible rank though, 4,700 in video games. We have two of them. I will profit $113 each on them. So let's just double check the other prices. Yeah, that's about right. 113, maybe 115 each. So we could do $230 right here. What were we at? Like 165, I think. Uh, so 165 plus uh, 230 is what, $395. So we are almost at 400 bucks. And that is already more than what I paid for it. We have the 3DS that we will look up. This one right here is selling for $95 on Amazon. I will profit 80 bucks after fees on this. So we were at what, 390? I think I'm messing up these numbers already. We were at like 390, 395. Um, plus the 80s, so we're at like, what, 470-ish dollars, just about give or take on that. Uh, 470, we have these two calculators, let's scan, well, let's just look it up, I'll just type in TI-83+. plus. Yeah, the all black one is selling for $33 at the moment, which seems very low. Yeah, it's one person undercutting, and then it's going for 38 and then 40 So I'll probably price around the $40 range. I don't need the sale instantly. I don't understand why people undercut by so much money. They're just putting money on the, leaving money on the table. So 40 bucks about is what I could get for this one, um, which means I will profit, profit about $34, $35 on this. So we'll say 35 bucks. And I assume the same goes for this, probably a little bit more. So we are at 70, we could even say 80, because this one probably goes for a little bit more. So another 80 bucks on top of that, what, 470? So I, I got all these numbers floating around in my head. I'm just gonna use the calculator real quick. So I think we were at 470 uh, plus 80-ish, so 550 minus my 360 by cost. So we're at about 190 to $200 on the low end profit on this stuff. So spend 360, make about 200, possibly more, um, especially because we have, is this everything? Yeah, this should be everything, especially because we have a few extra things here. We have uh, 3DS cases that I could possibly sell over on eBay for 10 to $15 a piece. We have a Vita cover sleeve. We have the Vita box. The box is in rough shape though, but at least we have it. There's supposed to be another item. I know that there's more stuff because I know my profit was higher. So, oh, I remember. Yeah, I was thinking, I'm like, $200 seems a little low. Uh, I remember knowing that I was gonna make more money than that. I'm like, did I really gonna make $200? Well, here we go. We have more games right here. We ended up picking up two PS Vita memory cards right here. We have a four gigabyte and a 16 gigabyte. They were originally asking 40. I got it for like 10 bucks or something like that. 
Um, these go for great, great, great money. All right, the 16 gigabyte one, I will profit about 30 bucks after fees. And then the four gigabyte one, I'll profit about 13 bucks after fees. So we're at what, uh, 30, 43, we'll just say $45. Um, then we have some video games here. <clears throat> we got Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. We have Animal Crossing New Leaf on the 3DS. We have Pokemon Omega Ruby on the 3DS. We have Ever Oasis on the 3DS. Animal Crossing Wild World on the regular DS. These Animal Crossing games go for uh, great money. We have Resident Evil Revelations on the 3DS. Fantasy Star Zero on the DS and Batman Blackgate on the Vita. So, whew, gonna make more than 200, probably closer um, to, well, let's see, if we were gonna make 200, then we're gonna make 245, 255, 265, 275, 285, 295, about 315, 325, 335, 345, close to about $350. So, doubled my money, possibly a little bit more. That's a lot better. I like hearing that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions at all. Subscribe if you haven't already. This is Thrift School, signing out. See ya.